All right, guys, welcome back to the Rangers Rebuild here on Football Manager 2023. Nothing can stop us this time. Not dodgy internet connections, not dodgy Twitch streams, not even Celtic or any of the European teams in the Europa League will stop us. But I tell you what, they did stop us in the last episode. We lost ground. We were fighting a war on both fronts. We were fighting domestically and in Europe, and we ended up giving up a lot of ground to both our rivals. So we're five points behind Celtic in the league, but we're also five points behind our Europa League group leaders after two games. So that's not good enough. We need to fix it. We need to fix it by winning here today. I think we need to probably win all four games. The two European games are an absolute must. We're against the worst side in our group. Six points is the only acceptable result from those two rounds of games. So I need to make sure that we do indeed win that. And then in the league, we've got a game against the Jambos. I'm a bit conflicted. Obviously, I want to win it, but Hearts are my team, so I you know, kind of don't want to win it at the same time, but I won't be trying 100%. And then we've got St Mirren. So I think if we can beat Hearts in the first game away from home at Tencastle, that should be the tough one. If we get that over and done with, I would expect to get three wins in the remaining three games. And we need three wins. We need four wins, so there's no point slipping up here. But like I said, it is Tencastle. First, and uh, I received an email in the inbox about uh, us being the lead Scottish national team production. So, turns out, out of all the clubs in Scotland, we have produced the um, the most players for Scotland. Uh, Liam Kelly, Billy Gilmore, and Nathan Parson. It sounded like good news, but then I remembered that you know we don't have any of those players anymore. So, what's the what's what good is it producing these players if we don't keep them? I know we got money for Nathan Parson, but but still, maybe not. I don't know if Liam Kelly's. Then, then again, I suppose we do need a new goalkeeper. But you look at Billy Gilmore and Parson, and they're two players that we should have kept. You know, they should have. We could have done with them right now. They should have been in this Rangers team. So yeah, kind of annoyed that it's, it's it's one thing producing these players, but unless you get to like hold on to them, then what is the point? Yeah, you might get some money, but I still think that Rangers could have done a lot better, especially with Billy Gilmore. But anyway. It's nice to see us leading something. We're not leading the league or, or leading Europe, so we may as well be leading something. The Europa League match against Slavico on Thursday, 6th of October has been chosen for live tele television coverage. Apparently we'll receive around 18k in that one, so I'm happy with that. Uh, Liam King's been performing well and training. Um, I think you've been training really well, Leon. Keep up the good work. Hopefully he does keep up the good work. Speaking of Liam King... I wonder if you'll get a start against Hearts because I do think we're a bit light at the back. We don't really have a full strength team to choose from, so we could perhaps put Liam King in there and have him as a start and centre back. No disrespect to Hearts, or we could try and go and, and squeeze Connor Goldson in, but I don't know. I think Liam King's been okay anytime we've played him before. I think he's been all right, so I, I probably will go with Liam King. Kamar Roof is set to be back anytime soon. Which is what we needed to see. We, we need to get those players back from injury, man. We really do need that. And uh, have a full squad to choose from. But I believe up front it's going to be Cholak. Now, Lawrence is lacking fitness. So, I'm not sure we're going to start. It looks like Connor Golden's okay, actually. So, I think we'll stick with Goldson and Davis. Because they have developed a pretty good partnership. We'll probably go positive. But, yeah, they've got the green link between them. And I want to keep that there. So, I think we will stick with Davis and Goldson. Uh, like I said, Lawrence, whose fitness ain't great, he's going to come back out. And is Kent available? No, Kent's fitness isn't great either. Nothing about Kent this season has been great, to be honest. Uh, do we go Matondo or do we go with Scotty Wright? You know what, I think we'll give Scott Wright a chance. I think we're going to play Scott Wright out in the left. Sakala on the right. Uh, McGregor wasn't that great last time we played him, so he's going to remain on the bench. Uh, Red Fan Yomas will stay in left back. And in terms of the midfield, we'll probably drop out Stephen Davis. I think we'll put Lundstrom back in and have Lundstrom alongside Jack. That looks like the team for me. And I think that is what we're going to go with. It is what we're going to go with. Anyone on the bench that can come... Like I said, Roof's potentially coming back. I might stick Roof on the bench just in case we can... You know, if the game's done and dusted, then I might bring him on for 15, 20 minutes. But that's the team that we're going to go with. Let's see if it works. We need it to work, so hopefully it does. If, we can't do much till we get to January, you know. When it gets to January, I do intend to bring in at least a couple of players. And I won't just be buying players for the sake of it. I've, I've realised that we need players to come in 
that are good enough for the starting 11. There's no point buying squad players. I don't intend to be in buying squad players either. Uh, Sir the Clark will start for Hearts. No Craig Gordon, which is uh, funny. Craig Gordon starts this one on the bench, but he's, he's, in, he's not injured. He's, you know, he's ready to go, but for some reason, Hearts are just putting in Sunder Clark. They're going with Atkinson, Halkett, Rolls, Kingsley, uh, Devlin, Kiermaut, Osoglu, Snodgrass, Grant, Mackay, and Lawrence Shankland up front. I mean, it's a good team, decent team, but I think we should be looking to win this one, and hopefully we can, uh, because we are beginning... Like I said earlier, to fall behind Celtic in the league, and that just will not do. But you look at Hearts here, their form isn't great either. Only got one, I mean, they've only got one defeat in their last five, but also they've only got one win. Speaking of one win, though, that's what we've got in our last five. So, I mean, our form's actually worse than Hearts. There was me about to bash the Hearts form, but yeah, our form isn't great either. So we really need to uh, get that changed here. We need to start winning games, and I'm hoping that we will. I'm thinking that we will. Players coming out then. Let's go. We will get this match underway. Not a lot happening in the opening 10, 15 minutes. Both teams have had one shot apiece. And it's now Ben Davis at the back. He will play it to Ridfan Yilmaz who will come down this left hand side. He's getting the ball into Scotty Wright. A guy that a lot of players... A lot of people think you never play for Rangers. It's just not good enough. And I tell you what, speaking of not good enough, that wasn't good enough there for Tillman, but it looks like it might have took a deflection. So maybe we'll cut him some slack. Tavernier is coming over to take the corner. Corner in for Tav. Cholak at the back post. Ball over the bar. It was close, but I guess not close enough. And Rangers then having the best chance of the game so far. Fashion Sakala currently also playing a, a 7.0. So, yeah, nice to see him. In the sevens, same as Ryan Jack. He just moves into sevens. Ryan Jack, by the way, captain for this game. Don't know why he's a captain. I don't know why it's not a Tav. The Tav dropped the captain's armband and Jack was the first person to find it. He picked it up. I, I don't understand that. Anyway, Fashion Sakala now. Pishing down with finds Jack. It's, speaking of the former captain, he's still the captain, I think, but I don't know why. I just don't know why, man. Tav in here. Oh, wait, no, wait. I think I took that. I took the captain's armband off him. I think I did. Yeah, I did at the start of the season. Never mind, my bad. Yeah, I think I spoke to him. I think I called him into the system. Robert Snodgrass. Hearts have the lead here at the Incastle. It's 1-0 to the Jambos. But, uh, yeah, no. I, I think I said to... I'm pretty sure I said to Tavernier at the start of the season, look, mate, you're shite, you're not a leader. I'm taking the armband off you. I called him into the office. So, yeah, that's why he's not the captain anymore. Well, into the back post, goals and heads it down. Clark secures it, so... Yeah, Sunder Clark then gathering the ball, launching it up, and unless something happens here in the next couple of like the next twenty seconds, then Rangers will trail at half time. It's Yelmas, great ball through Tillman. Tillman gets brought down by Kingsley, and oh, and or he's pointing to the spot. Will there be VAR though? I I thought originally Kingsley won the ball, but we're checking VAR. Hopefully, we get this decision. VAR's not been kind to. Oh, for God's sake! For God's sake. I mean, I didn't think it was a penalty, so it's probably the fair result, don't get me wrong. But I, I just knew it, man. VAR never goes our way. Half time, then. Let's see. It's, it's too early to throw water bottles. I'm not going to do that. But I am going to thrash my arms <laughs> and ask for a better performance in the second half. I don't think that's asking too much. I mean, come on, guys. We're pretty shit, though. Fashion Sakala though, he's averaging a 7.1, so Sakala's doing no bad. But it's the rest of the players that we kind of need to step up. Mentality-wise, we are going to go attacking. Let's see if we can get this uh, pace up more, be a bit more direct. Overlap on the right, overlap on the left. Get these fullbacks more involved. Uh, we're going to demand more. And with 66 minutes gone, I think I'm going to make some substitutions now, because not a lot is happening, honestly. Uh, Cholak's frustrated, he's not the only one Scott Wright's playing a 6.2, fuck he's coming off He is coming off big time uh, I'm going to have to bring on Alfredo Morelos It's either that or I bring on Kamar Roof I can't really do that, can I? So it's going to be Alfredo coming on We'll play Alfredo as a Pressing forward I guess And that's pretty much all we can do at the moment I mean I could push Lundstrom You know what, we're going to push We will bring on another attacking midfielder 
who's going to come on? Kamar, well, bring on Scott Arfield. Just not really convinced that Kamar Roof is a good option to see at the next 23 minutes, considering he's not played in, like, what, a year? <laughs> Almost feels like a year. But, yeah, there we go. That's us made the changes then. Will it benefit us? Better benefit us. We need it to. But, yeah, come on the jam tarts. I mean, there's certainly worse teams I could lose to in this save. So, you know what? If I'm going to lose to anybody, I'd rather it be hearts. So, I guess that's the only, that's the only consolation I can take at the moment. But we likely could be eight points behind Celtic here unless we find two quick goals. That's a good ball up to Alfredo. He brings it down well, but he doesn't strike it well. Horrendous shot for Alfredo Morelos. Like, what's he playing at? Maybe I should have brought on Roof. I'll tell you what. That, that, that ball from Morelos was almost on someone's roof. That's how bad it was, man. He absolutely skied it. Right, let's go. Tavenier doing this right-hand side. Said you're not good enough to be captain, but... Oh, gee, I was right then. Look at that cross. Horrible. Horrible. So many assists. Gets the equaliser with seven minutes remaining. But it's not enough. There's no point celebrating that. You need to go and win. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying a, a draw would be a disaster result, but when you're when you're trailing the league leaders, then yeah, we kind of do need to win. So let's we'll see if we can berate the team. The red fan Yelmaz, that's poor. That's very poor. Uh, are we going to make a sub now? Yeah, I think we are. Did I bring on Kamar Roof? I might. It's the only really option we've got here. Um, Tillman's playing no bad though. That's the thing. Uh, let me see. No, I'm going to take Ben Davis off and we'll push Roof up front. And we will bring Tav and we'll bring Redfan Yelmaz in his centre backs at the moment. And uh, I'll bring on Sands to, to cover Yelmaz. So there you go. We're going to go two up front here. Kamar Roof can play as a. I don't know what's he best playing as. We'll play him as a false nine. I think false nine kind of suits Kamar Roof, so. We'll see if it helps him here. A few minutes to go. Can we get any sort of counter, any sort of highlight? Hearts playing it for the back. You can see how many players Rangers are committing. I mean, so many blue shots forward. But I tell you what, they've committed too many. It's George Grant. Oh, Boyce was there. Tavernier got rid of it. It's up to Forrest. It's in towards Tavernier and Boyce. And free kicks being given. I think Boyce was offside. Hearts there. Unfortunate not to get a chance with that. Five minutes have been added on. So, pretty much the next goal will win this. Who's going to get it? Nobody. Nobody's going to get it. It's going to end in a draw. So, <laughs> so there you go. Who's going to win? Absolutely nobody's going to win. Just, uh, just a 1-1 draw in the end of the day. I mean, I don't think either team will be happy. I know I'm not happy because we drop points and, you know, we lose ground on Celtic and, and Hearts were winning that till pretty late on. So, they won't be happy either to have to settle for a point. So, yeah, I think both teams will be disappointed. I am disappointed. Although, I suppose if I look at it, glass half full, the team that I manage didn't get beat and the team that I support didn't get beat, so the form though is, is pretty poor. Apart from that 1-0 win against Aberdeen, we don't really have much to celebrate. And I spoke about how this is a rebuild. We're talking about how I can potentially sign players, you know, in January. Keep these sort of results up. I don't think we'll make it to January. You know, something's got to give. Anyway, we're into October. We made it to October. We're safe on the 1st of October. We are safe. We've been marked safe. But tell you what, while we get to November, I think we're going to need to start winning games. Or else we, we'll struggle, I tell you that. I think we need to start picking up three points here, there, and everywhere. League, Cup, Europe. We need to start winning matches now. Our next game is against Slavak. Oh, look at that. Still drew against Motherwell. So we didn't drop any points. But what we did do is we lost the opportunity to catch up. So slightly disappointing. And we now find ourselves four points behind Hibernian as well, which is not good. So, ah, interesting. <laughs> Hibernian flying here at the moment in the start of this uh, Scottish Premiership campaign. Milan looked to extend Ibrahimovic's contract. I wouldn't mind taking Ibrahimovic if he wants. If Ibrahimovic has got nothing better to do, then I'll happily take him. Player of the week was Johan Ayunga. He's actually not bad. Don't know if he's Rangers quality, but I should have probably checked that, actually, to see what the uh, <laughs> the monthly... So yeah, let's go back and have a look at that, because that is kind of crucial. 
and I've just completely glossed over it. So here's the monthly supporter performance review. Uh, breakdown, club vision and culture. I get a C. Matches, I get a C. Transfers, I haven't made any yet, so I get nothing. Tactics, I get a C+. Plus. And the squad, I get a C. So, I mean, the fans don't exactly want me out. They're not, like, screaming. They're not trying to burn down Ibrox to get in and attack me. But at the same time, I wouldn't say they're... I wouldn't say they're overly, you know, happy with the, the job that I'm doing at the moment. Which is fair enough, but we're not really doing that good a job, so... We'll see. Kieran Wright is going to be up for a bit, as is Christian Webster, but... None of those guys really play, none of those guys really feature, so again, it's not a big deal. Newcastle go top of the Premier League. It's interesting to see Newcastle do well in FM and in real life, because they're doing well and they haven't really spent any of their money yet, so... You begin to wonder how they're actually going to perform when they do start splashing the cash. Champions League then, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights. It's a competition that we wish we were in, but we were not because we bottled it. You know, we could have been. And in terms of team, team of the week, though, we get two players in there, Gilmaz and Tillman. Not bad. Uh, and now it's time for the Europa League. I don't even know who we're going to go with here. We've got this St Mirren game at the weekend. But I need, we need to win both. We don't even have the op. You know, there's not one where I'm thinking, oh, God, Lawrence out for... It's Tom Lawrence. He seems like a decent player, but he is so injury prone. Let's get into the next game then. Let's do this. Here we go. There's some results in already. Uh, Borna Barisic. Do, who, who are we going to change here? I'm not entirely sure. They're telling me to go cautious. We ain't going to go cautious, man. We need to win. Let me see. Um, John McLaughlin's been playing all right. Lindstrom's on a yellow. In terms of fitness, Redfin Yelmas probably could come out. You know, you know what? I think we'll put in Barisic. We'll give Barisic a go in this one. Um, James Sands. I forgot we didn't register James Sands, so he definitely won't be playing. I don't think we've registered uh, Kamar Roof either, have we? Or did we? Oh, we did. Okay. Even though he's injured, we registered him, so we must have been expecting him to come back and uh, do something. I think we're going to put Ryan Kent in. I know he's not 100%, but I feel like I'd rather have a 50% Ryan Kent than 100% Scott Wright. That's kind of my logic there. Uh, Cholak's been banging in the goals. Didn't score in the last game, but I think I'll give him a, a benefit of the doubt. We'll give him one more chance. I think Sakala's earned his spot, to be honest. Really, lately, Sakala's been playing well. We'll stick with Tillman. Tillman's been looking good. And in the middle, do we go with Kent and Lundstrom, or do I take Lundstrom out? Uh, I might go with Glenn Kamara, actually. I think we'll go with Kamara. I think Kamara's looked pretty good any time we've brought him in. So, yeah, I'm going to change it. We'll, we'll, bring in, we'll bring in Kamara. Ryan Kent is lacking sharpness. Yeah, you know what? Like Ryan Kent probably will not see out the full 90 minutes, but I'm hoping that he can play long enough to help us get in front, secure the three points, and, and then we'll take him off. That's going to be the game plan. So, So, we'll see. We will see. Let's go. This is the match we should be winning. Come on, lads. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Don't let the fans down. Or else I could be getting sacked. But that should that should be the that should be the team talk. Please, guys, don't lose, or else the board are going to sack me. I'm looking at this Slavkovo team. I mean, I, I don't know any of these players. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know much about the squad. What I realised is though that they have a very weak bench. I mean, I think they have what six players out of a possible what eleven. So that just tells me that the squad ain't big. So they could be struggling. Fashion Sakala. What's he doing? Finds Ryan Jack. Ryan Jack. Ah, that's poor man. Tav was making the run there. And he he should have he did better. 100% had to do better. It's Kund. Oh, Goldson intercepts it. Tav. It's Sakala. Spins around. Back to Goldson here. Going the wrong way. Come on, lads. Come on, now. Tillman finds it through the Cholak. Should be a goal. Hits it right at the goalkeeper. Mika makes the save. And Rangers there could have had the lead as early as three minutes into the game. But no, for some reason, Cholak couldn't put it past the opposition goalkeeper. So should have done better there. 100%. Could have been in front. Could have, would have, should have. At the moment, we're not. Eight minutes in here. Goldson back to Tavernier. Tavernier then. What's he going to do? Come on, son. Good cross in here. We know you've got that delivery on your right foot. You can do it. He can do it. He can do it. And he does do it. Tillman with the goal. Tavernier with the cross in. And that is it, man. Rangers have a 1-0 lead here. 
at Ibrox and we're just less than nine minutes into a Europa League game that we must win. So it doesn't get much better than that. Tavernier with the assist, Malik Tillman with the goal and uh, yeah, absolutely buzzing. McLaughlin then picks this one up. McLaughlin gathers it with both hands. He's hugging the ball as tight as he possibly can. He plays it to Davis. It's Kamara now. Kamara will launch this out to Fashion Sakala. Jack. Jack out to Tavernier. Into, oh, Tavernier's going all the way back here to his defence. Not too sure why he had to do that. Tavernier to Jack. Jack spins around, spins around, spins around. Finds Kent. Kent will keep this in. Can Kent attack the defence? He's trying to. He cuts back. He cuts in. It's Cholak. And Cholak should score. Cholak has to do better there. That's a free header at the back post and he's put it wide. You, you'd expect the big man to be more calm and composed there and, and double our lead. Jack nicks that one. It's up to Sakala. Oh, Sakala's header hits the side net. And I tell you what, though, we're looking good here. We're getting closer to a second goal. We're pressing. We're pushing. We're going for it. We want to get this game done and dusted. Barisic left foot it in. Back post, and it's Antonio Cholak. He gets the goal this time. He doesn't miss. That's his 13th goal of the season. He power headers it in past the goalkeeper. And on the 25th minute mark, it's Rangers 2, Slovak 0 in the Europa League. Great night here so far for us at Ibrox. Tab out to Sakala. Tab whips it in. It's a chance and Tillman. Come on, man. I know we're 2 0 up, but we really should need to be taking our chances. The next goal is crucial. If we get the next goal, it's, you know, it's game over. But if they get it, they're right back in it. So this third goal, whoever it goes to, is absolutely crucial. And we need to make sure that we get it. Feyenoord are 1 0 up against Union Berlin. So uh, that kinda, that's kind of what we wanted because Union Berlin's top of this group. So. And I, I don't really want to just aim for second place. I want to try and win this group. So, Feyenoord beating Union Berlin, I think, is kind of a result that I would, I would have wanted. I'll tell you what I want, though. I want this to go in. Kent oh, hits a right at the goalie. I think he was offside, though. So, yeah, he was offside there. Kent again. Through the Tillman, heavy touch, but he dinks over the goalkeeper, and Malik Tillman gets his fifth goal of the season, his second goal of this game, and that doesn't get much better than that, guys. I tell you what, that's 3 0 as we get to half time, and this game is dead and buried. And now we can make substitutions, we can bring on some players, we can get people some fitness, get some sharpness, and we can also rest players as well. So, I mean, that third goal, I think, just came at the right time. It's not, I don't want to say it saved us, but it's definitely made this half time team talk. A lot easier so we're just going to tell the players that are doing brilliantly uh, I'm going to give it like five ten minutes and then actually you know what I think we'll just make the changes right now like I say we've got plenty of time uh, we've got plenty plenty of time I'm going to bring on Kamar Roof we'll bring on Kamar Roof for I don't want to take Tillman off they'll probably want his hat trick so we'll bring on Roof for Sakala I'm going to bring on Alfredo Morelos for Antonio Cholak we will bring on who else we're going to bring on here I'm going to bring on Arfield for Kent. I know we're taking off a lot of players, but why not? You know, we're in a good position. Bring on Stephen Davis for Kamara. And um, is that it? I think we'll bring on Leon King for... Because, no, Tavernier's looking tired. You know what? I'm going to bring on Leon King and we'll play him at right wing back because Tav's done a good job and we may as well rest Tav. There's no point playing him into the ground. This game's done. This game's dusted. It's 3 now, so... Yeah, we'll, bring, we'll take off Tav. We'll rest Tav. And uh, he he hopefully will be 100% ready to go on Sunday for the game against St Mirren. Davis, Jack. Nice one-two between them. Davis then plays it to the left-hand side. It's Barisic. He will launch one forward and it's Cadleck at the back there. Easy for him, just intercepts that. Goalkeeper launches it up, it's Pasota through to Serum and, and he's going to look to, oh no, it's crossed in, I tell you what, that's a good goal, it's Libor Kozak with the goal, that's his fifth of the season, 
and that was a quick counter there. The hit is on the break, and Kozak has absolutely leathered that one into the back of the net. So, yeah, I have no complaints. That's a good goal, and all of a sudden, you're, maybe this game wasn't done. You know, Maybe I got a bit too hasty there, taking all those players off, because... You know, at 3-1 with 22 minutes to go, if they get one more back, then it is really time for us to hit the panic button. But let's see what Leon King does. Hopefully he's not going to panic. Leon King to Roof. Roof spins around. Lovely wee Perlette there. Hits it to Jack. And all around Jack has absolutely smashed that top bend. It's going to go down as an own goal. Must have took a deflection off Cadlick. Surprised he didn't give that goal to Cadlick there. I'm surprised he didn't give it to Jack because the shot was heading towards goal anyway. But nice, no, he's, he's, I don't know, he's giving a goal there. I don't care, it's a goal, nonetheless. Whether we get it or we don't get it, they'll count. <laughs> it's a goal for us and it, it, it will see off the game. So yeah, I'm happy with that. I mean, just now, just playing a bit at the back. Davis into Jack. Jack, oh, good ball to Roof. I'd like to see Roof get a goal. He won't get a goal, but i tell you who will. Alfredo Morelos. And he needed it because, well, maybe not, because the, the referee's coming over here. We we never get free our decisions. It's going to be disallowed. I know for a fact this is going to be disallowed. Yeah, goal disallowed. I mean, yes. I don't know. Free AR hates us. Every time it goes to free AR, we don't get it. They always disallow it, man. It's a joke. Whether it be a penalty or a goal or whatever, man. But if it goes to free AR, then I know we're not getting it. But it doesn't matter. We're going to win. 4 1 5 1. Not a massive difference. And there you go. It's full time. Happy with that. Big, big win there in that Champions League game, so uh, nice work everybody, that was good, players look happy, players are delighted, what do you make of Antonio Cholak outperforming his expected goals, uh, I'm sure his numbers will offence, uh, he's, like, he's scoring goals at a good rate, that's how I care about, I don't care about predicted goals and stuff like that, Rangers 4-1-1, you'll love to see it, Malik Tillman, great performance, I'm going to praise Tillman because Let's be honest, when you play when you play an 8.8, .8, you deserve some sort of praise. So, we will we'll sh shake his hand, why not? Why not? Right, let's have a look at the Europa League then. So, we are currently sitting in third place with four points from a possible nine. We're now two points behind Union Berlin, who just lost to Feyenoord. And Feyenoord are now three points ahead of us. So, like I said, we do have three games remaining. Up next, it's the away trip to Slovakia. We have to win that. I'm trying to think of what result I would prefer at the next game between Feyenoord and Union Berlin. I don't really know. But we need to win anyway. We just need to win and then maybe a draw. Or maybe a Union Berlin win. Either way, we're going to have to perform. When we take on Feyenoord and Union Berlin... We're going to have to be up for those games and we're going to have to get results in both of those games or else we're not going to go through anyway. So we can only do what we do. I'm not too worried about what the result of the other game is. As long as we win our game, that's what really matters to me. So we've got a few days in, we'll sim through and then it's a big, big game at Ibrox where we can hopefully make a statement. We can hopefully pick up a big three points against St Mirren and give us some confidence for our last Europa League game of the episode. Someone in the chat trying to offer a promotion to the channel wants me to pay for viewers and followers. I'm not going to do that, but I tell you what, I'd maybe pay for points. Let's see if we could make up some points on Celtic, because like I said, we're trailing by five at the moment. And I'm not convinced that we can uh, keep in this league fight, because our league form has been a bit ropey. We need to beat St Mirren. We do need to beat... If we don't beat St Mirren, I wouldn't say the league's over, but... The league would pretty much already be over at this stage of the season. So, yeah, no, it's a massive game against St Mirren. We were lucky last time we didn't lose any points when we drew. Celtic are taking on St Johnson. They're sitting in 10th. I expect Celtic to win that. St Mirren are having a decent season. They are sitting in 6th place, but their goal difference is minus 5. So, they've been the whipping boys, I guess. Or they've, at least they've conceded quite a few goals. Or either that or they're not scoring that many goals. Either way, look, they're, they're conceding more goals than they score. That's why they've got the negative goal difference. So, I'm hoping... The uh, same will it will be the same when they take on us at Ibrox. 
Celtic did beat St Johnston by four goals to one as well. So uh, yeah. We need to win. It's as simple as that. Big result needed. Player of the week news, Aaron Moy. Aaron Moy, what, 8.9? That's actually not bad. But how can they award him? I don't know how they can award him player of the week when there's still some more league games to go. That doesn't sit right with me. Surely they should have waited until uh, after this game before handing out any awards, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Ryan Kent looks like he's getting in better form. Cholak will be starting. Glenn Kamara, I thought, played well in the last game. Uh, Tavernier, the arrest Tavernier. Do I rest Tavernier? It's a, it's a risk. I think risk and Tavernier is a risk. He could play Barris at shooting the right, I guess, but do I really want to do that? No, probably not. I just think due to the lack of options, we're almost sort of like forced into playing Tav. It's not that I don't want to play him or he's not playing well. It's just I think the guy needs a bit of a break, but I don't think we can really afford to do that. No, we're going to go with this team. I'm happy with how we're performing at the moment. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to stick with that. And I've got a feeling that we'll have more than enough in the tank to beat St Mirren. Or at least I'm hoping we will. If we don't beat St Mirren, I, I will be really annoyed. You can see that St Mirren team, it's, it's not bad. I mean, they've got a Yunga, they've got a Brophy, you know, they've got players that can punish you up front. But I'm hoping that we're just way too good, so we should be far too strong. It's important to make the home and most advantage. Home advantage, let's do it, go. Um, do you hope your team can produce it? Obviously. What does he expect me to come out and say? No, I don't want to see a performance. I want us to get beat. I'm not, of course I'm not going to say that, for fuck's sake. I mean, what, kind of, what kind of dumb question was that, though? Seriously. I'm glad we don't have that. Uh, that reporter is one of the masterminds <laughs> as part of our uh, you know, backroom staff. Jesus Christ. Let's see then, goals in to Jack. Jack finds Davis here. And uh, it's, again, it's raining. Familiar story in Scotland. I'd be shocked if it wasn't raining. Jack then playing it out to Fashion Sakala, who will keep it in. And I tell you what, it's a goal already, and it's that man there. He scored two in the last, and he's picked up where he left off. Malik Tillman with a goal in the opening 34 seconds. I am delighted with that. You can't ask for much more than that. That's... Probably the quickest goal I think we've scored. Um, not just in this save. I mean, it's, it's very rare you'll see a quicker goal than that. So, yeah. Buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. It takes the pressure straight off us, you know, in case... Uh, the last thing we wanted was St Mirren, like, holding it for a bit. And we get maybe get into half-time and you're, you're trailing. But no, that's not going to be the case. We're winning. We're not trailing. So, I'm absolutely delighted with that early goal. Kent. Oh, what a ball for Kent. Fashion Sakala. We're playing some good stuff here. We are playing some good stuff. Kent and Sakala will celebrate. Kent with the assist. Fashion Sakala with the goal. And uh, yeah, between them, that was pretty good stuff. So happy with that, man. Happy indeed with that. Hearts are getting beat 1-0 against Kilmarnock as well. So not a good result there for the Jambos. But uh, I'm not too bored about that right now. I have to worry about my own team and the team that I'm managing at the moment. We are 2 0 up. Shaughnessy, long throw into the box. Headed away. Golds and no. Back to Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy crosses it back in. It's a Younger back post, and it looked like McLaughlin. I thought McLaughlin tipped that over, but apparently it hit the crossbar. Turned, yeah, mate, I've turned into Pep's Barcelona. And Antonio Cholak makes it free. Antonio Cholak, simple as that. Lovely wee header there inside the six yard box, and St. Mirren. Are in big, big trouble here. St Mirren are in huge trouble. It's not looking too good for them, I'll tell you that. I don't think they'll be going back to Paisley with any points as things currently stand. We're a few minutes for half time. Now we're in at the break. And it, it could be another, this could be the same situation as the last game, just taking off players and, and resting them for the next match. Because, like I say, we're getting games every three or four days. So, yeah, I think we'll give it like 10 minutes and then we'll probably just rotate the squad and you know, we'll bring on five players. I'll probably bring on Morelos again, maybe bring on Roof again. 
try and get them some um, try and get them some fitness. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that then, because this game's done it. I want obviously I want the clean sheet, but I am going to take Tavernier off. I mean, he, he does look tired. I don't really blame him. He plays every single game. Now, who do we have here to bring on? I'm I'll play. Surely Yelmaz can play on the. Can he not? Apparently not. <laughs> I'm going to play him there anyway. Screw it. I mean, he can't be that out of place, surely. Um, ben Davis is on a yellow card. Should I maybe take, should I maybe take Davis off? Um, will I bring on... Who are we going to bring on? I'll bring on Lundstrom. Lundstrom can play centre-back. Or is Jack a better centre-back? I don't think it really matters, does it? No, Jack's not that good either. I'm going to play Jack at centre-back. I've got faith. Uh, let's see, Cholak. Take Cholak off. We'll bring on... We'll bring on Alfredo, see if he can finally get a goal. And Fashion Sakal is having an excellent game. I don't know why I take Sakal off, but we'll take Kent off because I'm just not not really sure about Kent at the moment. It's fitness. So one more change. Probably Tillman. Rest Tillman. He's looking a bit tired. We'll bring on Well we'll bring on Scotty Arfield. There you go. We'll make those five substitutions. And uh yeah, should be. I'm glad we saved this performance though for St. Mirren and not Hart, so that I wouldn't have wanted to beat Hearts 3 0, so yeah, well, beat St Mirren, don't care for St Mirren. And look at that game, though, speaking of hearts. Look at that game at Rugby Park. It's Kilmarnock 5, hearts 3. That's that's a belter of a game. Eight goals in that one match. George Grant pulling one back for the Jambos. Barisic then. His cross in. It's Kamar Roof. Back to Barisic. Ping pong at the moment in the middle of the park. And now it's Brophy, and it's a good save for McLaughlin. John McLaughlin pulling off a big save there to deny St. Mirren the goal, which is good. I don't want St. Mirren to get a goal, I want the clean sheet. So let's keep it going. St. Mirren, though, with the corner. It's ball in, head of the way. And that's a strike that is going absolutely nowhere. Hearts have got another goal now. It's 5-4 at Rugby Park. <laughs> Josh Ginelli pulls one more back. Jesus Christ. What a game that is. Nine goals. That's insane. Nine bloody goals. I thought, were, I thought this was a high scoring game. 3 now, but nah. What is it? They're having all the fun at Rugby Park. But we've done it. We've, we've held out. That's what I wanted. We got the win. 3 now. Clean sheet. Shitload of yellow cards though. I mean, for some reason... <laughs> We had five, and St Mirren had seven. So 12 yellow cards, but surprisingly nobody got sent off. Bit weird. Bit weird. It's a nice win. Oh, fuck. I selected the wrong option. It's a nice win, but we have to raise our performance level. <laughs> we want to make progress. Oh, man. All the players look unhappy. No wonder. Jesus Christ. Did I go to... Oh, it went to 5-5, five five, mate. That's mad. That is absolutely mad. I can't believe I selected the wrong option there. Fuck, the players are going to be pissed off. I mean, they're going to they're going to think like this guy's demanding a hell of a lot. They must think I'm Hitler or something like that. You know, the amount of pressure on the the standards that I want provided. Oh, it did. So Josh Ginelli, he got a late late goal as well. So he got two goals in the last what, ten minutes, eighty eighth minute and eighty fourth minute, and that rescued a win, a, a draw for Hart. Well, holy shit! Look at that. Hearts were actually. Hearts were four 0 down and then five one down in that game, so that that's that's pretty crazy there to come back and get four unanswered goals to rescue a point. That's that's a mad result. Probably keeps Robbie Nielsen in a job. Fashion Sakala eight point five rating. Borna Barisic wants to discuss club matters. Oh, he's probably he's probably not happy with the amount of game time he's getting. I would imagine that's his. I would imagine that's why he's pissed off. Um, the players and he feels you were. Ah, oh, yeah, I was. I mean, I need to. I just need to back down here, don't I? Um, let's see. Yeah, promise. Oh, there you go. Kelly's claps. Yeah, mate. Kelly did clap. The claps big time. He must have fought, fell asleep or something. It's to lose four goals like that. But I think it's mad that this, this, this Kelly scored five goals in the opening 40 minutes. 
And then couldn't they see out the game, you know, it's madness, absolute madness. So Kyle, performance pleases Foss. Who the hell's Foss? Dave Foss. Who's Dave Foss? Let me find out who this guy is. Oh Christ, he's my assistant manager, I didn't even know that. <laughs> Alright, Dave Foss, oh my god, right. I, I take it Geo brought this guy in. Oh, right. I don't know. I might actually bring in my own assistant, Matt. I didn't even think of that until now. But I'll give this guy the benefit of the doubt. But if it goes wrong, if we lose the league to Celtic, if we get knocked out of Europe, then I'll just put all the blame on him. So there you go. Scapegoat. I've got a scapegoat ready to take all the blame. I'm budging into the Kelly dressing room at half time, giving it 10k to everyone for the draw. That sounds about right. I'll tell you what, she never put that sort of money into our transfer budget, so I'd like to know where she's got all this cash from. Dishing out 110k to the Kelly players. Maybe subs as well. And Budge has probably just went bankrupt after that. It could have been worse though, she could have bought a, she could have bought a pie for them all. Pies are about 25 grand at Kelly, man. Pies are a disgrace at Kelly. All right then, three days, we break here and then we're back into action against Slovakia. I mean, if we can win that Slovakia game, I'll be delighted. Should have beat, well, I say we should have beat Hearts, but actually, I thought we were lucky to get a point against Hearts, so you know what? If, if we can respond and get three wins on the bounce, I will be more than happy with that. So, uh, yeah, let's just see. So, Carl and John McLaughlin, both players there, into the team of the week, so I think that was well-deserved. Uh, Champions League again, Celtic have lost. So, how's Celtic doing in their Champions League group? I've got a feeling they're sitting on zero points. Let's see. Let's have a quick check here. Oh, they are. Group D. Look at that. Inter Milan. Currently four wins out of four. You've got PSG and Chelsea on five. And Celtic on nil. In fairness, I mean, Celtic have been absolutely shafted there. That is... I think we've seen some groups of death in the Champions League before. But that must be the worst one ever. Inter Milan, PSG, Chelsea. That must be the... I think that is the worst group I've ever seen. I don't think it gets worse than that. I think whoever made the... I think whoever made... I think it was Ali McCoist. I think Ali McCoist made the draw for the UEFA Champions League. Because Celtic have been absolutely shafted up the ass there in that draw, man. Without lube. That's just... That's just wrong. Inter Milan, PSG, Chelsea, man. That, that's no fair. Yeah. I actually... I almost feel sorry for them. I don't feel sorry for them, but I almost could almost sympathise. If it was us in that group, I'd be complaining to UEFA, man. I'd be going mental. I'd be wanting the group. I'd be wanting a redraw. Fuck that shit. How many play those three teams? That's an absolute joke of a group. Van Bronckhorst pinpoints Cole. Oh, Rangers, Rangers favourite Giovanni Van Bronck. Are you sure that he's still a favourite? I'm not sure. After this season, I'm not sure he's a favourite. Charlie Lindsay is injured. That's no good. Out to five to six weeks. I suppose the only positive is we never play him, so... <laughs> it's not good that he's injured, but... I mean, it could have been worse. It could have been like Cholak out for five to six weeks. Then I'd be slightly more concerned. I'd be looking for the big red panic potion, and, uh, and I'd, be, I'd be pushing it, for sure. Liverpool with a big 4-0 win over Club Bruges. Milan have beat Bayer Leverkusen by one goal to nil. Barcelona, 4-0 win over Malmo. That's what I would like here. Coming up next, I think I'd like a, a nice 4-0 win. Marshall set the sign for Rangers. Aidan Marshall. I, I, I'd like to know who's making these signings, because it's not me. But we keep signing more staff to the club. No wonder Rangers go broke. Jesus Christ. Every, every time I hit the continue button, man, we're signing about 10 staff members. Alright, that's it then. Here we go. It's uh, final game of the episode time. I believe we can... Who are we going to play? Fashion Sakala is currently three and a half stars, so I think we're going to stick with Fashion Sakala. Ryan Kent, I'm going to stick with Ryan. You know what? I think we're just going to stick with the same team. I think Glenn Kamara's doing not bad lately. 
at least it's not Dave. Yeah, it's not Davy Marshall. That's better, I suppose. Could be worse. Could be Davy Marshall. Although you could argue Davy Marshall might be <laughs> probably a, maybe an upgrade on John McLaughlin. All right, then. So we're going with this. I think this going forward. I'm not sure if it's our strongest eleven on paper. But form-wise, they seem to be doing the job. So, yeah, I'm going to stick with them 100%. Let's see. Um, we're doing well, so let's keep that good run going. I need to make sure I get my team talks right this time. I don't want to mess it up again. Last time, they were absolutely furious, man. They were all fucking raging. They were like, what do you mean? We just won 3-0 and you're not happy. It's like, I was happy. I just made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Hit the, hit the bloody wrong button. could, but to be fair, my heart tinted specs won't let me fully agree to that. <laughs> I can see where you're coming from, I suppose. Plus, John McLaughlin's a former Jambo as well, like, so yeah, I take that back. We'll, we'll, give, we'll give McLaughlin the benefit of the doubt. Ball up through Fashion Sakala. Oh, that's Sakala. Should hit the target there. Has to score. Before we actually sign Sander Clark, you know, I, I was always thinking that if Rangers ever wanted rid of McLaughlin, I, I would probably take him back for backup to uh, Craig Gordon. But, I mean, now that we have Sander Clark, man, absolutely buzzing with Sander Clark, so. I mean, Sander Clark would have been. Uh, it's not often that the players that you actually want to join your club join your club. I remember when Sander Clark left St. Johnson, even when he was with St. Johnson, I, I really wanted Hearts to sign him. I thought he could have been, you know, the replacement for when Gordon does eventually retire. And then we go out and sign him. So, yeah, I'm fucking delighted with the signing of Sander Clark, to be honest. But I'll tell you what, I'm not delighted with the start to this game there. Slovakia could have been, Slovakia could have been in front there. Conk. It Bullen. Bullen now taking on Tavernier, but he'll turn around and he'll, and he'll pass it straight to Fashion Sakala. Thank you. Oh, and then Fashion Sakala passes it straight to that dude. It's Yannick. Oh, I tell you what, thankfully this Slovakia can't finish because they've had two really good chances now in the opening 14 minutes and they've uh, completely missed them both. So. Yeah, I mean, they ain't really punishing this at the moment. Ball in, John McLaughlin comes out and catches it. Corner Golds and then finds Kamara in the middle of the park. Not a lot happening here. Kamara, though, to Barisic. Barisic coming down the left-hand side. He's into crossing territory, but instead he decides to play it to Kamara, who'll cross it for him. Oh, goal! Brilliant. Tillman there, running in. Gets picked out, and that's Malik Tillman's seventh goal of the season. Superb goal, Kamara, great ball in, and Tillman timed his run. Got to be glancing header on it, and he put it past the goalkeeper into the back of the net. Rangers now in complete control. Oh, not complete control, but we're in control, we're winning. Fine order beating Union Berlin as well, so tell you what, that will not be a good... That's not a good double header for Union Berlin. They went into these round of fixtures, top of the, the group, but looks like they could be facing back-to-back -back defeats, and speaking of defeats... Slavico haven't been defeated yet. They pull a goal back and they're now 1 1 in this game. It's Ulbrich with the header. And they're right back in this. Not happy, right? Let's let's shout at the team here. Demand more. Not ideal there to concede that just before half time. Kamara drops deep. Plays it to Goldson on the edge of his own box. Goldson now. Finds Ben Davis. Ben Davis looking for Kamara. Kamara out to Barisic. Tell you what, Ryan Kent's not done much today. Let's see what he can do here. Kamara then. It's Jack up to Cholak. Cholak back to Ryan Jack. Jack then finds Fashion Sakala who will spin around, spin past his man into Cholak. And Cholak hits it right at the goalkeeper. I think he should score that. I think he should have scored that there. Cholak, good chance. Kent then whips it in. Head of the way, Union Berlin have pulled one back, so they're level now. So both games, 
on match day four are, in this group are currently tied. Which is not good for us. I wouldn't mind a draw in the other game, but we need to win. Let's make no mistake about it. Kent, out to Tavernier. Tavernier, keep your uppies. Tavernier showing off now. Sakala into Tillman. And Tillman squeezes it through. I think it's a mistake for the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper got something on it. He's got a touch on it, but he's not kept enough of his body behind the ball. And it's, it's managed to just sneak in. So yeah, that puts us under seven points in. I think we're still sitting in third place, but... We are level on points for Union Berlin and just one point behind at Feyenoord. So that was a crucial goal for us. Let's see. I'm happy with the number of shots, guys. Keep it going. And we'll get straight into the second half here as we look to win this game and keep our Europa League hopes alive. That's the aim of the game. That's the target. Barisic. Back to Ben Davis. Lenny Kamara plays it back to Golds and Jack now. On a yellow card. Might actually take Jack off soon. Don't want to risk him down to 10. So ball it to Kent. Kent. Oh, Kent's cut inside. That's brilliant for Ryan Kent. Can he finish it? He can't. He did so well there. He got right he got into the right area, but then just couldn't get the shot away and it's a header over the bar for Tillman. Fifty odd minutes gone now on the clock. Corner for Slovak. Oh my god, and it's Kozak. Libor Kozak. I believe he's Czech Republican. He's he's banged it in. And that's twice now we've been pulled back. The home fans are going mental. Obviously obviously they're happy, but we're not. Tavernier won that one hundred percent. Never a penalty. And uh, we're going to berate here because we need more for this. We need we need to win this game. Tab back to Goldson. Fashion Sakala now will run on to this. Sakala coming into a central position. He finds Ryan Kent. Kent through the Cholak. And just like that, you know, we were level for a minute. But, what, oh, no, 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 don't be doing this to me, please, referee. Why is he going to VAR? Why the fuck is he going to VAR? Well, actually, we finally VAR gives us a goal. But I still don't understand why he went to VAR. It didn't look like there was anything wrong there. But we get the goal. So no problems. No issues. And let's just see if we can... We're going to go balanced here. And uh, we're going to slow down the directness. We're going to slow down the tempo. We're going to be more disciplined. And we're just going to try and see this game out. Ten minutes remain. Corner and again. Cholak's first to it. Heads it away. Boric will lose possession there. Tillman collects it. But what's Barisic? Oh my god. Goldson clearance there on the goal line. I don't know how he stopped prevented that figure in there. I could have swore it was going to be 3 3. And I think if we can see any more goals now, I mean, it's unlikely there's going to be enough time for us to find a winner. Right, let's. Barisic looks injured. We're going to bring on Yelmas. Uh, we'll take off Jack because he's on a yellow card. Bring on Lundstrom. Kent's not done much. We will bring on. Who are we going to bring on here? We'll bring on Rabi Matondo. We'll bring on Arfield for Tillman. And uh, we will. Uh, you know, I think we'll bring on Morello as well. I'm going to bring on Kamar Roof. Give Kamar Roof a chance. Making all these changes. Let's just hope that we can see it out now. We're kind of at the stage now where, yeah, I don't think with all these changes we're going to have any more goals in us. So let's just hope that we can manage to get the 3-2 win. Or should be a win. I mean, four minutes add on time, but looks like we're going to see it out and we do. So they go full time. 
big, big win. 17 shots to their nine. I mean, we deserved it. Narrow win, but I, I think I think that's about right. I think we'd done enough to win. We didn't blow them away by any means. They were okay today. The, the opponents were decent. So, But I, I definitely believe that uh, we got the win. Um, nice work, everybody. So, you know, it's a, it's a good away win. It's three points. It keeps us in a really good position to get out of this group. As you can see then, Union Berlin ended up beating Feyenoord late on. So it means that we are level with Feyenoord, but two points behind Union Berlin. So it's, it's and the goal difference is all close. It's 4-3-3, three, 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 and then obviously Slovakia are on minus 10. So they're not in contention. They're out. They can no longer go through. So it's going to be a three-way shootout between us, Feyenoord, and Union Berlin. The only problem is that both Union Berlin and Feyenoord have to play Slovakia. So you, you would have to assume that they're going to get three points from those games. So... Even though Union Berlin are on 9 and Feyenoord are on 7, if, if we're being realistic here, Union Berlin are going to be on 12 and Feyenoord are going to be on 10. So for us for us to get through, I think that we need to... Yeah, we're going to have to pick up a minimum of 4 points. And I think if we get 4 points, as long as the wins against Feyenoord, we should get 2nd. But if we want to top the group, then we probably need to get both wins. And unless our win is against Feyenoord, then we probably need six points because, like I said, I, I just think that I think they'll both beat Slovakia. So, but we'll see. Bonner Barris is going to be out for a couple of days. We've received 543k. Gerald's fans want a permanent deal struck for Tillman, don't we all, man? Don't we fucking all? Huh? Um, let's see if we can actually have a quick look at that. Let's see if we can look at that. Let's um, his, his value is four points. I don't know if we can afford that. How would we even... Optional future fee. So we've got 6 million. So does that mean we can go ahead and just buy him? I don't think we can do anything until January. But as soon as we get into January, I will be checking that. Because I think with that optional future fee, I think we can just pay 6 million and get him. Look at his bonuses. So goal bonus, 2.6k... Unused substitute fee, 1.8k. Appearance fee, 3.5k. Man, he's on good money here at Rangers. Loan contracts, 14. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I mean, he, he wouldn't be... In terms of wages, if, if, if we can get him on a proper deal, then he, he wouldn't be losing out of money. You know, he'll, he'd be, financially, he'd be getting the same amount. Maybe even more, because he'll be playing more games. He'll have more opportunity to get these um, goal bonuses and stuff like that. So it could be a good move for Malik Tillman. Of course, I think the guy's got a lot of potential. You know, I don't think he'd be a Rangers player for 10 years or anything like that. But I think it's possible that he could decide to come and then, you know, if he can force a better move in a few years' time, then go ahead and do that. But I, don't, I wouldn't rule it, us signing Malik Tillman on a permanent deal. Yanis Hadji is set to be back soon, which is great. Been out for nine months. I'm looking forward to get Hadji back into the team. And uh, yeah, like I said, he's fouled it quite a lot. Uh, Sakala's playing well though on the right hand side so I don't know if Hadji's going to come in and just you know take the, the jersey off Sakala I don't think he's just going to walk straight back into the starting 11 but you know Yanis Hadji is Yanis Hadji he's a good player full, full of quality so I cannot wait to have him back I just don't know if he's going to be our you know starting 11 at the moment but we'll see we will see uh, it looks like Hibernian have dropped points somewhere and look at that, next game is the Premier Sports Cup game. So, since Premiership, come on, I I, I, really, I don't think I've ever wanted Hibernian to win, but if they win here, then we can claw back some points on Celtic. Can Hibs get an upset at Celtic Park? No, they can't. They've lost 4-0. And it probably should have been, it was 4-1, but it probably should have been 4-0. They got a Henderson goal in the 90th minute, so. Yep. Celtic then continuing to look good. Massive goal difference. The only unbeaten team in the league. Uh, and and they currently you know, have a, a decent points advantage at the top of the table as well. Things are looking good for Celtic. There's no doubt about it. Furuhashi shines at Celtic Park. Eight point eight rating there for Furuhashi. He's doing good. John Suter is also set to be back soon, so 
Looks like we're getting all these uh, players back from injury at the same time. Suter is going to be it for another what? But another month. Hadji maybe for another month as well. Tom Lawrence will be back in a couple of weeks. But they're beginning to start training, which is great news. So uh, I think Holander's probably going to be it for another like six weeks. But I mean, there's a lot of players that we're missing. As soon as we, I'm not saying we get them back and all of a sudden we we turn into the best team and that will be better than Celtic. I'm not saying that, but you know, there's a lot of key players there that we've had to go without. So yeah, of course I'm looking forward to getting them back in. I think our starting eleven could be changing drastically. I mean, you look at Hadji, could easily come in. You look at Suter, I think it has to be Suter and Golds, and I think that's the centre-back partnership, um, you know, going forward. Yeah, you look at Halander even, you know, maybe even he could get back into the team as well. So, there's, uh, <laughs> there's going to be there's gonna be a lot of stuff going down when those players come back. It's going to be a lot of competition for these places, and we're going to have to, we're gonna have to sort that out. We're going to have to pick who plays and who doesn't play, so... We have some happy Jairus players on our hands, and we could have some unhappy Jairus players on our hands. So we'll just have to wait and see how things go. But yeah, next episode, guys, going to be absolutely mad. We're taking on Hearts again, but this time it's going to be in the Singe Premiership. Not the Singe Premiership, sorry, the uh, Premier Sports Cup quarterfinal. So that should be a big one. Uh, then we have Livingston in the Premiership. Then we have Union Berlin in the Europa League. Then we have Aberdeen in the Premier League at home and then the last game is against final. Probably in the next episode I think we'll play five games and we'll finish up with the final being a trip to Holland to take on Fire and we'll see if we can we'll see if we can get that win and we'll see if we can get out of the Europa League group stages and prolong our European journey till after Christmas into the new year. So yeah, better we do in Europe, more money we get, better the club does, better financials we have better players we can sign. Makes sense. The longer we do in Europe, the better. Plus, I mean, I'd like to try and repeat that historic run to Europa League final last year. I know it's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy, but got to start somewhere. And we need to start by getting out the group. So, yeah. Next time out, Union Berlin, Feyenoord. I'll be looking to take six points. I think four, though, will get us out of the group. I do think four will do it for us, but second place, you know, you, you finish second, then you're getting a big dog from the Champions League. So, realistically, we want to finish fourth, and that's what I'll be going for, guys. First place, is my aim, my target, the objective. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, leave a follow, leave a like. If you want to subscribe on Twitch, then you can do that. If you've got Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. And uh, it gets me money, and it gets you, I don't know, pleasure of knowing that you're, you're helping me out financially. So yeah, if you've, got a, if you've got a free Amazon Prime Twitch, then by all means, feel free to Subscribe that and I will catch you hopefully, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, if not then probably Friday. So that's it guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, been so Scotland, 98 and I'll see you later. Till then though, peace.